Where are you going? Take a bus to the grandparents. Oh. Well, that's a fun day, Buzz Buzz. Okay, bye. <laughs> Morning, guys. So, today is July 31st. Today just so happens to be the fitness seminar that I'm going to be speaking at in San Antonio. I honestly have no idea how tonight is going to go, how the event is going to look. I'm supposed to be giving a presentation, aka I'm going to stand up there and talk for 7 to 10 minutes. Matt has assured me that that's not a very long amount of time, but um, I, I'm honestly, I'm used to talking, like, but in front of 60 plus people, I don't know how that's going to go. Apparently we sold out the seminar, which is good. It's a very small venue, but I think there's at least 60 tickets to require it to be sold out. I've been trying to work on my speech for the last two weeks, and I wrote up this really long speech, but it's more like a an ebook kind of thing about my fitness journey and all the diets I've been through and what I've learned over the years of chronic dieting and binge eating and restricting and all that stuff, but it's way too long and I think it's boring, so I don't know. I, I honestly think I'm just going to wing it. I'm gonna sit down and try and maybe write out some bullet points and have note cards with me, but really just go up there and talk. So I'm trying not to think about it so I don't get too nervous because the more I think about something, the more nervous I get. And it's gonna be great. It's gonna be great. But we're also supposed to have dinner, so that's good. I'm gonna try and get as much footage as I can. I'm gonna try and see if Matt can record my speech so you guys can see it. But yeah, let's see how it goes. Sleepy, go do your business. Alright guys, so I'm ready. I have a fanny pack on, just like business cards, and this is where I'll keep my phone, and I'm bringing an external charger so that um, my phone doesn't die while we're in there. But I'm ready, but I'm not. Um, I'm gonna go pick up Matt, and then we're gonna go to somewhere in San Antonio close by and finish up my speech. By finish up, I mean start it. I'm just gonna write some thoughts down on note cards and Pray for the best, so let's go. I got my note cards. We've got about two hours, although they want us there at about 5.30, even though we're gonna be, we're gonna be a bit Turn late. Right. Go. Turn left onto East Houston Street. Houston. Keep going. It's a couple up. East Houston Street. Then your destination will be on the right. Who's going here? Uh, I, I guess. I mean, downtown right there. I think it's just the <laughs> yeah, that's it. All right, now everybody get out of your chairs. So we got some hummus. What is that? Couscous? Quinoa? <laughs> Veggies, chickpeas, kale salad, and I'm guessing this is like a seitan. It's like a tofu. Or tofu, maybe? Tofu.
talk shows, radio shows, articles, and, um, and I, I, didn't, I never really like, you know, talked about me too much, but I got to talk about the movement. I got to talk about the vegan movement, the animals, healthy lifestyle, environment aspects. And I, I never would have thought I would be standing in front of a bunch of vegans, obviously. You know, being like in the firehouse, getting made fun of constantly. I know everybody can relate to that, but I mean, I literally, I literally walk in the firehouse and, you know, I get, I get made fun of. I know uh, a good friend, Belair. All right, oh, she is me. Blue Blairing Yay. Fitness on Instagram, a uh, vegan bodybuilder, and uh, she is here in the flesh, so. Um, can everybody hear me okay? What? Cool. I'm just going <laughs> but um, I'm Blair. Uh, if you guys don't know me, I'm just a bodybuilder. Um, I like to lift. I like to eat, and I started this whole fitness thing, um, found out that I was passionate about it. Um, so just to give you guys a little bit of history about, well, first of all, my husband and I, this guy right here, is probably like the best guy ever. Um, we, live, yeah. <laughs> we also live in an RV, which is kind of interesting to people. So um, tying that in with the vegan lifestyle, bodybuilding is quite interesting. It's an adventure. Um, but I, okay. Show of hands, who here has been on a diet in their life? <laughs> Restrictive diet? Pretty much everybody, yeah. I've, um, I've essentially been dieting all of my life. Um, I, was a, I was kind of an overweight kid growing up, and um, I think it was in middle school whenever I went on my first diet. So I found out I was, I was chubby. You know, I got, I got made fun of for being chubby. chubby. And um, went on my first diet, and that started this whole period of, like, yo-yo dieting. Um, throughout high school, I lost some weight and restricted my intake. I did a lot of cardio, lost a good amount of weight, um, and had body image issues ever since. Um, and so getting into bodybuilding was different for me. I'm going to grab some water. Um, it's funny. I... I Bodybuild, but yet talking to you guys makes me so nervous. <laughs> um, so, um, getting into bodybuilding, I, you know, growing up, going through restrictive dieting, um, I didn't want, I just wanted to lose weight. And so, going through that restrictive dieting period got me fixated on the scale. Um, I didn't like my body, I didn't like what I looked like or how I felt. And so, I Wanted to, I wanted to be confident in who I was, but I didn't know how. And I thought that doing cardio and dieting is what was going to do it for me. So eventually, um, I started working at a gym, and I started seeing women in the gym that looked really good, like they had muscles and like they, they looked really healthy and confident and strong. And I was over there like walking on the treadmill for hours. I would go and I would do cycle, and then I would do zumba, and then I would do power pump. And I thought that that was going to get me to look like that. And I wasn't eating enough. Um, I would track my calories and try to eat less than 1,000 calories a day, which you guys know is not healthy in any way. Um, but I didn't know this at the time because I didn't have the information. Um, I didn't have people telling me, you know, that it's not healthy to not feed your body and, and do hours of cardio. and um, So I tried to maintain a low weight that wasn't healthy for me. And so I eventually started with a trainer at my gym, and um, thank God for Josh, because I told him my first goal uh, whenever we started lifting is I told him I want to be a badass, because I started seeing those CrossFit girls on Pinterest, and I was like, oh my gosh, they look good. And so I told him I wanted to be a badass, and so he's like, well, you know you have to lift heavy, right? It's like, I don't want to get bulky. Like, I don't want to look like, you know, I pictured those big bodybuilding women, like I would do that once I touched a weight. But we started lifting, um, and I realized that lifting, pushing heavy weight, improving in the gym made me feel so good. Knowing that I was able to come into the gym and lift five pounds heavier than I had before, eventually whenever I was able to squat my body weight, I was like, this is awesome. And so my confidence started to grow, and I realized that you need to eat to fuel your body, to help your muscles repair, and to actually tone the muscle, you have to have muscle to tone. And I realized that, and once I figured that out, it was like over for me. So I started looking into bodybuilding, um, and I saw pictures of women on stage, tan, looking crazy, 
Um, and I was like, I want to do that. And in 2014, January of 2014, I made my first goal to compete in a bodybuilding show. And I was so far from where I needed to be, but I set that goal. And I said, I'm going to do this. And I started going. I don't think that Matt realized what I was doing um, until about halfway through. And I signed up for my show, and I said, I'm going to do this. I looked into the suit, I bought the shoes, um, and I dieted down. And what I found whenever I hit that stage, whenever I got on stage, was, you know, you stand up there, and people don't know you. The judges don't know you. You're tan. You've got your heels on. You look pretty, um, but they don't know your story. But I do. And knowing that I had literally changed my life from getting into bodybuilding was enough. And it was amazing. Um, but with that, bodybuilding in itself isn't necessarily healthy. Uh, one thing that I found being on stage and seeing what goes on backstage, it's, it's a whole different world. Um, a lot of the women that were back there uh, hadn't had water in two days. They were on 800 calories or less a day, three, four, five hours of cardio a day, um, eating three foods, fish, asparagus, egg whites. And that was pretty much it. Um, and so coming from a restrictive background, I was like, something is wrong here. There has to be a better way to do this. Um, and so the, the method that I use for just my lifestyle is called flexible dieting. And basically what it is is I just track my protein, just kind of like Brandon talked about. I track my protein, carbs, fats, and that's it. I don't restrict my diet. If I want a cookie, I have a cookie. I fit it into my intake, and I move on with life, and it doesn't affect my prep. And, of course, it's vegan, so I should probably mention that I'm vegan, too. Um, you guys might know that. Um, and I, I went vegan two weeks before my second bodybuilding show, which is really risky in the bodybuilding world because typically you try and keep your diet as normal as you can, especially leading up to peak week, which is the week before the show. And um, what did it for me was the documentary Earthlings. And they call it the vegan maker because <laughs> once you see that documentary, you can't unsee it. And it took me two tries to watch it. Um, and it was something that I started and I knew in my heart that I needed to see it. It was, it was a truth that I needed to see because I was buying these products and I was supporting these industries that they were telling me about. Um, so I grabbed a towel and I sat in my apartment and I watched that documentary. And then as soon as it was over, I texted Matt who was, who was out of town and I said, hey, I'm pretty sure I'm going vegan. And going from drinking egg whites and eating turkey breast and chicken breast for every single meal to vegan was a big change. And doing it overnight was a big change. Um, our families were shocked uh, when I told them. You know, my families would, uh, we would get together and have like meal prep. My dad would cook a bunch of chicken, we would take it home. So it was quite a shock for them. But for me, it was something that I wanted to do. And I, I knew in my heart that I just wanted to do it. Um, so I went to vegan two weeks before my show. And I told my coach, and he's like, okay, you know, just keep your macros the same, and we'll figure this out. And so what I did is I just traded any animal products that I was currently eating for the vegan alternative. Um, I know a lot of people don't like the meat alternatives, but I didn't honestly care at this point. I just wanted to switch. Um, and so I did, and my arms didn't fall off. Um, my <laughs> eyeballs didn't pop out of my face. Like, I didn't lose all of my muscle. I still competed. I felt awesome, and I actually found that my recovery between workouts is better than it ever has been. Um, we, my husband and I rock climb as well, and so we've been having, we were having joint issues, so like finger, wrist, elbow, like tendon issues. Um, whenever we went vegan, it, it went away. Uh, my soreness has improved between workouts. I'm not near as sore as I used to be. I'm not sore for as long, which these are bonuses. Like, I didn't really honestly care about the health benefits of going vegan. A lot of people go vegan for health reasons, but mine was like, ethical 100%. Um, and so the health benefits were a bonus. And then I saw Cowspiracy and I thought, hey, there's actually some environmental benefits to it. Like, this is actually a really cool lifestyle. Like, so that's whenever I started becoming a little more uh, vocal about it and talking about it on social media and telling my friends and my family. And the results are mixed as far as how people receive it. Um, but of course, it's just, you know, I've, I've been there. I wasn't always vegan and so I have to understand that you know people they, they come to you with these concerns and you have to understand you know not everybody's going to be vegan but I just want to offer some different 
knowledge, you know, things that I've learned. Um, but as far as bodybuilding goes, I just started prepping for my third show, and this will be my first fully vegan prep. And I want to help show people that you can be strong, you can be awesome and badass, and build muscle and compete um, all fully plant-based on a completely compassionate diet. Um, I think that about covers it. I know it's kind of short, I kind of talked pretty fast, but I'm, I'm on um, Instagram, YouTube, so if you guys ever want to reach out, I'm always happy to help. That's the story. Oh, of course, let's get a little photo off. Alright, so any questions? Um, do you believe in supplementing, or do you prefer the idea that people should eat, you know, all, of their, all of their micronutrients? Yeah, no, I think no. that depends on your lifestyle. I mean, if you know that you're a junk food vegan, then taking supplements is a huge plus. But if you're generally eating what you need and you're getting blood tests and you find that you are interested in anything, keep doing what you're doing. Um, I definitely recommend, and I think that you can get the majority of your uh, nutrients from your food, and I do. The only things that I supplement is B12, and I do take creatine because I'm an athlete, and every athlete should take creatine, I think. Yeah, creatine and B12. I use Jarl's, Jarl's formula for the B12. It's just a <coughs> tongue tablet, and then I'm using, uh, I think, Body Tech creatine right now. Yeah, I, I honestly am more aware of my micronutrient intake now that I'm vegan since before, and looking back, I think I was definitely deficient in many nutrients before because I, I just assumed I was good when really I was eating like chicken and broccoli and that was it. So now I'm like so much more abundant so I would assume that I'm getting more nutrients now but I do supplement on days that I eat like doo doo. So you know, it's like we'll go out and we'll eat a bunch of junk food and I'm like I'm going to definitely take my multivitamin today um, and I, that's what I recommend for most people like just kind of fill in the gaps and like Brandon said earlier you'll just pee on the rest. So. <laughs> I do take um, chlorophyll and spirulina. Um, for maybe 12 for some of those nutrients, and yeah, when I remember, I take my multivitamin. But I do get tested um, my blood work often. The one is, uh, if you could just talk about if you'll take an EPA or DHA supplement, uh, and then the other question is, you're a one. I'm just curious. <laughs> <laughs> I do take a, a DHA supplement, and I honestly, I was taking fish oil before, and I'm like, this is. It's awful, like if you eat fish burps and stuff. <laughs> not gonna lie, the DHA, they're not the best because they still have like a fishy taste, but it's made from algae. Um, so if you just, I just go on Amazon and search uh, vegan DHA and they've got tons of supplements for it. And that's one thing that I do. Um, I don't eat a lot of algae based products, so that is one thing that I definitely do supplement with every day just as a just in case and I haven't had any issues. So. In regards to beer or wine, I actually don't drink alcohol. Um, I've got anxiety and it gives me panic attacks. Um, there were many nights that we would drive home and I would be crying in the car because I had a margarita and <laughs> panic attack. I don't know. So drinking doesn't go well with me. I like, I mean, I like margaritas, but I just don't settle well. So. As long as it's vegan. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, you know, these people are awesome. They're all on Instagram. Uh, you will see all their handles, uh, Instagram usernames in the ebook that I'll send you this evening. So hit them up. You know, they're, they're so nice. Like I said, I was like, hey, uh, you want to do this event? And they were like, yes, I'm in. I'm like, really? <laughs> Thank you. We'll definitely be doing this again. I'm not sure exactly when we'll keep you updated, though. Uh, but in the meanwhile, you know, follow us on Instagram. You'll be able to connect and, uh, and be in the loop. So. Thank you, everybody, for coming. Yeah. All 10 feet. I did terribly. No, what? You talked just like everybody did, but you stayed within the time frame. <laughs> no, it was like three minutes. No, it was not three minutes. Look back at the tape. Replay. It was fun. The turnout was awesome. A few moments later. Alright guys, so I am actually sitting here and editing the footage of the uh, seminar and my chat and I realized that I never filmed a closeout. It was really, really late whenever we got back. At the very end, I said I did terribly. 
to be completely honest with you guys, I'm gonna keep this short because I know the video is already 20 minutes. So if you have made it this far, thank you so much. Hit that thumbs up, let me know that you did watch it all. I was so nervous. I completely forgot everything I had practiced or, or wrote down. I didn't even take my note cards up there. Um, to be honest, I just focused on not passing out. <laughs> I was so nervous, but of course it's it's only gonna get better from here. The next one that we do, I'll be a little bit more comfortable. I'll be a little bit more practiced, but um, watching it back, it wasn't that bad. I touched on most of the points that I had wanted to, and I stayed within the time frame. So again, it just takes practice. I know it does. I know I'll get better at public speaking. Of course, you know I sit and I talk with you guys all the time, but I'm not staring at the faces of every single subscriber. If so, I would be completely overwhelmed. But again, thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you did enjoy. I hope you found some of the information helpful. Um, if you have any further questions as far as what I chatted about, please feel free to leave them in the description box. I love you guys, and we will see you all in the next video.